Canada are going to the CONCACAF Nations League semifinals. Sarah Pereira joined with James Sharman. And we were at that match Tuesday night, James. Canada beat Honduras 4-1. Yeah. Easy. Piece of cake. Easy. <laughs> I mean, listen, Honduras were appallingly bad. Shocking. Really bad. Shocking. I mean, man, that, that program has gone from being extremely strong and, uh, you know, one of Canada's arch nemesis to that. I mean, listen, don't forget, Honduras beat Canada last time. In June. In June. Not long and, ago. And so, so, listen, there's that. But let's take nothing away from Canada. They were superb in this game. Yeah. Uh, they, they went at Honduras. Um, the, the formation looked cohesive. The players knew what their roles were as a young team as well. Yeah. Carl Laren, you know, should have had a hat trick in the first half. We can talk about the penalty in that situation. Yeah, we'll perhaps, get to that. But, we'll uh, get to that. But yeah, hey, listen, from a Canadian standpoint, like I said uh, earlier in the week in room 4 4 2, this team needed a good performance and, and a good win. You know, if you look at the last number of months, even towards the end of qualifying, then a couple of friendlies, then the World Cup, right? It's been a while since we really saw this team get both those things. We saw performances at the World Cup here and there in certain games, mm-hmm. um, but the results weren't there, obviously. So now to see that, you know, 90-minute performance, uh, young players looking really, really strong, uh, the, the best players looking good, as, as they should. I thought from a Canadian standpoint, if you're a Canadian fan, you should be very, very happy. And if you weren't there, you should have been there. Yeah. Because there weren't that many tickets available because they shut down the top part of the stadium and the tickets were extortionately priced. But I digress. Uh, really quickly on that. <laughs> 13,500 fans approximately. Sad. Sad. And I, I don't blame people for not paying what the tickets were going for. I don't blame them at all. At all. But at the same time, I mean, we were there and it was empty looking like it they i know they tried to close the top so that everyone would shove into the bottom and to make yeah, it look like a roaring TV atmosphere didn't work honestly at like at least half the fans were honduran like you think so oh no, no there were i wouldn't sh- go that far there were there were quite a few i don't know but they it were looked, quiet <laughs> yeah that's the thing i think afterwards those blue flags started going into the back yeah, there were several yeah, exactly. though like a, a solid amount i'd say at least mm. were there so i don't know it's it was really really poor showing for Canadian fans and I don't blame them it's obviously what's going on listen the on. ones that were there were I think a fine voice the voyagers do what they do yeah they were great throughout yeah um, but it just you know we discussed earlier this week it's kind of a statement as to just where we're at yeah as a nation on the way on the way but on there's the still a, a long way to go yeah well listen you know what you get knocked out of the World Cup and you gotta go and now win everything that you can in your respected region so good for them heading to the semifinals We just saw Jonathan Azorio. He scored at home. That was great for him. Mm -hmm. Also, Jonathan David, but two for Kyle Laren. And as you mentioned, it could have been three. This was his penalty that he missed. There it is. Yeah, this was unfortunate. Jonathan David is the designated penalty taker. Uh, Was that that a Sarah Ferrari original? Yeah, that was me. Nicely done. Thank you Not very shaky much. at all. Great, great camera work there. (laughs) I had to put the sound off. (laughs) (laughs) You know, yeah, I mean... We saw at the World Cup, um, mm-hmm. the penalty against Belgium, and in the end, uh, it should have been John David. He's the penalty taker, and Alfonso Davis steps up. I want the ball, and he missed, right? And this time around, it should have been John David again, but Carl Aaron on the hat trick. You understand why that mm-hmm. might happen. Um, and John Herbin was asked about this post match, and he goes, Listen, listen, I was kind of hoping it would be John David, but I understand why it was Carl. But next time, yeah, there's yeah. a big penalty. Because a 2-0, two 2-0, nil, two nil, as we know, Sarah, is the most dangerous scoreline in sports, right? Oh, don't we you, know you, it. In the end, it didn't matter. But I was a bit nervous. Like, oh, that could have been, that could have put that game away yeah. at that point. And now it's 2-0. Honduras could get back in it. Thankfully, it didn't happen. But uh, I think the next game, as John Hubbard said, John David will take a penalty no matter what. Because it's time that you give him the ball in those situations. I don't care about hat-tricks. Personal Stats yeah. mean nothing, even though those two guys are going head to head for the yeah. all-time, you know, yeah. leading yeah. scorers race. It, it's irrelevant. You no. give it to the man that is better from the spot, and that's John David. Yeah, no messing around. Now you got a Nations League, a Gold Cup, and then hopefully a Copa America. Let's talk a little bit about John Herdman, though. He was uh, very pleased after the match, excited, going to Vegas, and he was actually asking, you know, or hoping that Canadian fans would show up. To Vegas. And I said, listen, John, if they're not going to BMO Field, what makes you think they're going to Vegas? Like, Canada <laughs> soccer has to get this together because that was a big ask. And I, I, I'm struggling to see how fans are going to, you know, travel down south when 
Yeah. Well, listen, we, we saw Canada fans do travel well. We saw the World Cup, right? Not in enormous numbers. Hey, That's the thing. In Costa Rica, there was a good There was, there was a, a good, good number. Yeah, yeah. They, they do travel and more and more are. The Voyagers really organize themselves mm -hmm. extremely well. Uh, but like John said post-match, he said, you know, usually in these, these Gold Cups and Nations League games down in, in the States, you're getting 70,000 Mexican fans up to watch those games. You're getting as many obviously US fans to watch those games now thankfully Kevin, uh, uh, Canada will avoid the States and Mexico in the semi-finals mm -hmm. um, which is good but yeah if you're a Canadian fan it's Vegas it's June there's some great deals <laughs> head on down why wouldn't you want to go of all the places in the world to attract Canadian fans right now it's probably the best place isn't it yeah it's no, Vegas it, it is it is it's just I think it keeps going back to the same question is Canada a football nation well and they, they, yeah they won't they won't pull 20,000 fans down there but yeah. you know I don't see why a few thousand won't it's not yeah it's, a, it's not far enough it's just next door it's Vegas there's so much for it to offer they should be going but Herdman also spoke about some other things regarding CONCACAF <laughs> take a look and see what he had to say post-match Next three years, those young young players, if they're going to play matches like this in Concacaf week in week out, it's not helping them. You know, we can we can build the camaraderie, the team spirit, work on new tactics, change things we do in the preparation. If we're serious about really competing at a World Cup uh, as an organisation, as a country, we've got to get after it. We have to take control of our destiny. If this team's not playing T1 games, getting T1 matches consistently, we are wasting our time. They have to get those experiences. I love this, you know. Yeah. I love this. I was smiling looking at him at the press conference because it is so accurate. Canada needs to stop playing matches against, you know, sorry, but the likes of Curacao or, you know, a Cuba. I know this is CONCACAF, so these are the teams that they that are in the region, but they got to get more games that are high level because they are not going to, you know... Progress. Progress, Grow. exactly. Yeah, you know, John Herbman, he's known for the big grin the smile you know he's so positive he's great on camera right loves a camera but now and again he looks at that camera and he gets serious right mm -hmm. and and I, I think everyone listens to John Herbert when he does that he switches and that was a prime example he knew what he was doing there yeah. that was a screaming message to his governing body and, and other governing bodies it was a plea to them to say listen we want to come we want to play we want to play your teams you know bring us over to Germany to England to Argentina Curacao played Argentina right be creative find a way and it's also screaming to his association listen we understand the money isn't there right now but you've got to find a way we can't be scheduling friendlies in these important windows before Nations League games that potentially could qualify for Copa America and playing the likes of Panama Costa Rica yeah you can't do it you've got to find these tier one nations these are, these are young players who are, a lot of them are playing top level football now they want to grow and play against the best in the world and you won't do that playing these other teams Canada's grown right it's just Mexico the States and Canada now in CONCACAF mm -hmm. there's a big gap yep. at the moment between the rest right yep. so let, let's bring some of the better teams either here and that's going to be difficult because it is very expensive I get that but let's get this team to be a touring team even let's yeah. get them on the road in yep. some of the bigger nations and, and playing some proper teams because this team's looking good there's yeah. a lot of potential there, but you have to grow, and you won't grow playing the the usual suspects. No, completely. They need to. They need to get overseas. They need to play higher level, higher level teams for sure. Really quickly as well, we have to talk about Ativa Hutchison. Not a dry eye in that press conference afterwards. Ativa came out after the match against Honduras and hinted at his retirement, kind of saying, "The end is near. I know it's coming. I've had such a great career. It was. It was lovely though. When you said it, you were just like, oh, just." just proud of you he's just a, he's just the greatest isn't he yeah he's no. one of the greatest you know athletes can has ever produced mm -hmm. and one of the best people as well right yeah and when he says listen this is is it's not the announcement just yet but i'm really close yeah i've got a couple of games left and i really want to win a trophy Go get it's like, okay nation league games again vegas hello okay, trophies say goodbye to atiba in vegas properly yeah because that last night it's probably his last game on Canadian soil for My Canada. Goodness. You know, he was smiling. He seemed happy. But to me, this guy deserves a much bigger farewell than that. Yeah, I know. And that, maybe that's in Vegas with the trophy. How great would that be? Nations League and go get the Gold Cup too. Why the hell not? Canada will be taking on Panama in the CONCACAF Nations League semifinal with Mexico taking on the U.S. <laughs>